In this video, I quickly want to go over how I actually use Migaku and how to set it up for sentence mining. So the first thing you have to do is obviously to add it to Chrome. And it's going to download for a while, so you need to wait for that to be done first. I'm actually just joking, you have to install this first on Anki and set it up as well, but it's not complicated, so just go to this page, I'll put it in the description, and just copy this code and install it on Anki. It has a tutorial on how to do it, it's not complicated. Okay, it finished. So I suppose you can pin it to make it your life a bit easier and then you have to log in. Okay, so after logging in, it greeted me with this screen. And I suppose you can just select Japanese and install defaults. And my internet is really slow, so I'll wait until all of these downloads are done once again. Okay, it once again finished, so you can, you know, choose the language, but it was already selected by default for Japanese at least. And, you know, here you can customize your font settings. For example, I kind of like to max out this, not max out, but just put this border to pretty wide. Often you have Japanese subtitles that are inside the video, so it's good to have like a good backdrop for the Migaku subtitles. But what's important is that you go to this dictionary place and install a few more dictionaries. So hit download dictionary, hit next, and I also recommend choosing all of them pretty much and hitting download. If it already exists, then it, you know, says it already exists. So no problem with that. And after the downloads are done, I recommend reordering these dictionaries because it's going to make your life a bit easier. So for example, I like having JM dict above for audio and Google images below it, but you know, you can put it to the bottom as well if you want to like something like this. So after that's done, you can go to frequency lists and I also recommend downloading all the frequency lists. So it's pretty much the same thing. Just select all of them and hit download. And finally, you also have the word lists. And this is once again, exactly the same thing. Just select everything and hit download. So now that that's done, all you need to do is go to learning status and import word data from Anki. That's what tells Mingaku which words you already know and which ones are new to you. I personally already have my word data built up from previously using Migaku, so I can hit sync now and it's going to download the previous learning statuses that I already had. And now the setup in this settings page is pretty much done, but you can also explore what other options there are to, you know, customize it to your own liking. So after that, what we need to do is open the Migaku dictionary. And this is basically what adds words to your Anki cards. So you need to open Anki as well. All right, after I opened Anki, it connected, and now we have to set up these fields so Migaku knows what kind of cards to create. And this is pretty much up to you how you customize it. And there is also a default Migaku Japanese note type as well. And if you want the custom one, then you have to, you know, make it yourself. And I already made one, and I'll link a deck in the description which has this note type as well. It also has custom like CSS, so the cards look how I personally wanted them to look like. And the way it works is that these fields come from the note type, but the data that goes into these fields is something you choose yourself from over here. But first, you have to make sure that the dictionary has the correct language. So right now it was Cantonese, and you should just put it to Japanese, so it changed over here. So the way I set it up is the sentence is the sentence. As for the translation, I just leave it empty and the target word is unknown words, definitions is definitions, screenshot is none, sentence audio is of course sentence audio, word audio is forvo audio, and images is screenshot. The reason why I set it up like this is because that decided where the picture will actually go in the end, in the card. And I personally also leave the example sentences as empty. But of course, this is just how I personally set it up. So I encourage you to just play around with it and see what you personally like the best. Then I also click on add definitions automatically and click on automatic definition settings. And th you can also customize it the way you want it set up, set up personally. But I had it set up something like yes. And for audio is basically the word audio. The reason I left this as zero is because often I had duplicate definitions from, you know, two dictionaries at once. Most of the time, JMDict is going to have all the definitions anyway. So most of the time, Kirei Cake is not necessary. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And you already are ready to start sentence mining. Of course, you actually have to <laughs> choose the deck as well. I personally put it to immersion sentences, which is my custom deck. 
So now to actually get the sentence mining, I first want to start off with YouTube. So when you have the toolbar enabled, you should see this kind of an icon somewhere in the page, usually in the top left corner. You can move it around as well. And if you click on it, you get the toolbar options and here you can choose the target language. So you can put it to Japanese and the way it gets those subtitles is, you know, from, from YouTube, from here, basically. And now when you hit browser, you can see the subtitles on the side and there are a bunch of options here, but I like leaving it like this, except I turn off the pitch shapes because I think they are a bit unnecessary for me. Then you also have these bracket settings, which is useful when the subtitles have stuff like these kinds of brackets that indicate music or something like that in the subtitles themselves. It's pretty common in dialogue and for background sounds and stuff like that. Then you also have this option, which basically controls what the subtitles are going to show. Are they going to show furigana or only kanji or only kana? So for example, if I put it on kanji, then it only shows kanji like this. But if I put it on furigana, furigana and then parse it, you can see that there are furigana on the kanji. But I personally like leaving it just as kanji. You can also put it to only for unknown words as well, but I just leave it as kanji. Okay, I refresh the page to reset everything again, just to explain that the way you parse a video is that you hit this button or hit the shortcut key that you can see highlighted in the tooltip. If you hover the browser button or many other things, they also show what shortcut is used to control those. And I also recommend hitting this question mark button, which shows all kinds of shortcuts, which I recommend weeding through because it makes sentence mining much easier. So I can parse by either hitting the, the parse button, or let's say I just came on this video, I can hit G to bring up the browser and then hit the parse key, which actually didn't work right now. And the reason why is because I'm on the Estonian keyboard layout and the buttons are dependent on which keyboard layout you have active on Windows. So if I change my layout to Japanese, which is basically the same as the English layout, then hitting the button will work. So the next thing which I want to say is that you can jump between subtitles either by pressing the timestamps up here using the arrow keys or pressing A or D. So if I hit D, it's going to jump to the next subtitle, which is this one. And you can also toggle the subtitles visibility with W. And if you press S, then it replays the same subtitle. So now I'm going to explain how sentence mining works with Migaku, but before you can sentence mine from videos, you have to go up here and hit enable recording. It's a limitation with Chrome extensions that you basically have to do this for each tab separately. So the way sentence mining works with Migaku is that if the word has a red underline, if you hit this button or this button, these export buttons or hit Q, then it sends the word to the Migaku dictionary. You can see which data it added to the fields. And now all you have to do is hit create card. And if I check the card, then this is the result of the card. However, we can also activate add cards automatically. So if I now mine this word again, then it skips the step of sending it to the dictionary and it automatically sends it to Anki. And after I'm done with mining that word, I'm going to hit A to go back to the previous subtitle and I'm going to hover this word and hit number two. Now it has a yellow underline, meaning that it's not going to be mined next time I mine that word. You can actually hit number three to mark it as known as well, so then it won't have any underline, but I personally like marking it as yellow, so in the future I would know that if I see this word ever again, then if it's yellow, then I know that I recently already sentence mined that word. And another useful thing you can do is when you select this word and hit Control alt b it's going to search your Anki browser for this specific word, you can quickly find the card that you just made. This is also really useful if you want to mine some word, but you're not sure if you already have that word mined or not. For example, this word here, right? It says that it's red, but if I search it from my Anki, comes out it was already in the Core 2 K6K deck, but just in the kanji form. So basically I can make mark this as known. So as a real life example, this word just showed up in my immersion. If you see a word like this, then it's basically the same as having a red underline. So if I look it up, you know, it's pretty much what I expected it to mean. And it seems to be extremely common. So it's kind of weird that I haven't mined this yet. So I can select this word, hit control alt B and search it in my Anki. And for some reason, 
comes out, I actually do not have that word. So what I would basically do is just hit Q, mine it, wait for the things to pop, then hit number two and just keep on watching. Okay, I found the next word I wanted to mine. And what I wanted to say is that if I hit the export button or, you know, hit Q, then I can actually immediately mark it as known even before those things pop. So I'll, I'll start mining it and I already mark it before the card has finished creating and it won't break the mining or anything. Now, when I look it up, it has everything marked properly. So as one more example, I found another word. I look it up with shift and you know, I don't have it mined. I actually know that I have the same word mined, but without the show at the front. So I might as well mine it. So I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to mark it as two and it's going to pop and I'm going to keep on watching. But what if you have a scenario like this? There are two words which you would like to know and there's one word which you would not like to mine, but it has the red underline. Well, in that case, you just hit number three or two up to you to mark it as known and then you just hit Q and mine those two words at once. And that's pretty much it. Now, when I look it up with control of B, you can see that both of those words were included in the card and the word that I didn't want to mine was not included. So it works perfectly that way as well. But what about a scenario like this instead? So listen to this audio. I'm going to hit S and replay the audio. So this subtitle is generated automatically by YouTube. But if I look up this word, then it doesn't really make sense because the pronunciation is different and the meaning is not suitable. So usually in this kind of a scenario, I open up the Migaku dictionary and try to search for what I heard. So it seems that it's something like this. And indeed, the reading and meaning seem to make sense. So I want to mind the same sentence, but I want this word to be replaced with this one. Well, in that scenario, I have to first turn off add cars automatically and send this sentence to the dictionary, but I don't want this word to come to the card. So I'm just going to hit two for now. I'm going to mine it. So it showed up, but it doesn't have any target words. So I'm going to hit this button here and it's going to add this word to the card manually. And if I also want the audio for that specific word, I can just add this audio as well. And if I want to, I can also fix this sentence by just copying this word and pasting this word in here instead. And I can also hit control B to make it bolded as well, if I really want to. And then all I have to do is just hit create card and it's going to make the card. And then I can once again, turn on add cards automatically. And I can also mark this word as unknown again, because this is not the word I mind. So that's how you handle a situation like that. And the final thing you should know is that if you find yourself in a scenario like this, where you feel like this is a word, but for some reason it's not parsed properly. Well, in that scenario, all you have to do is hold down shift and press C, and then it's going to look up the longest word first. And sure enough, it was a word after all. So the way you mind this one is pretty much the same as the previous example, but even a bit easier. So all you have to do is click this dictionary button and hit Q to mind the sentence. And then it's going to show up in the dictionary and you just have to add this definition to the card. Of course, first you need to turn off add cards automatically, but once all that's done, you just need to hit create card. And that's pretty much it. So most of the time creating a card literally is this simple. You just hit the export button and just then keep on watching. And I already made a card. You can do all of those things that I suggested, such as, you know, mark the card as known, but that's all optional. And of course, these are just my own methods of how I figured out what works best for me, but you can, you know, find your own ways as well. For example, you can also max export cards from here as well. But personally, I've never done that because I prefer mining as I go. Also, one more thing you can do is if you click up here near the timestamp, then you can select multiple subtitles and you can choose to either create four cards or create one card all from these subtitles as if they were just one subtitle. And that's pretty much all there is to mining videos. So quickly, I want to go over mining text. So I got some random Wikipedia page and it's really easy to mine text with Migaku. So I'm just going to hit the parse shortcut. But first I have to choose the target language. I can just hit parse or I can just use the parse shortcut. I'm also using the dark reader extension to change the colors darker. So all there really is to it is finding a word you want to mine and just selecting the text and then hitting the export button. 
So for example, let's say I want to mine this word. I can, for example, select this text and then hit Q. And then it made the card and, then I, and I can just hit two on the word I wanted to mine. And that's pretty much it. There is also this feature that when you hover some text and hit control, then it's going to automatically highlight some part of it. But I personally don't really use it a lot because all, like these small symbols and stuff can cut the selection too short. So personally, I just select it manually. And if you accidentally hit the control key, you can just hover something else and hit control again, and then it's going to deselect the selection. But the only thing that you do have to pay attention to is that sometimes there are words which could be a singular word or expression, but they're parsed as two separate words. And for that, you just have to hold shift and Z to look up the longest word first. And mining words like that is the same principle as with video. You just have to open the dictionary and manually add that word there. From my understanding, this issue is going to be solved in the future because Migaku is completely reworking the extension right now from ground up and this shouldn't be an issue in the future anymore. But yeah, for now, you just have to keep that in mind. And that's honestly pretty much all I have to cover. There are other features in Migaku as well, like the pitch accent trainer, all of which are really great and I really recommend you check them all out because in my opinion, Migaku actually provides a lot of value. So I genuinely do recommend checking them out and seeing for yourself if it's something that you personally would find helpful. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And Migaku has its own features and tutorials and everything like that as well. And they also have their own Discord server. So if you still have any questions, then I recommend checking all of those things out. And of course, if you want to support my channel, then I leave my own ref link in the description. And okay, that's all I had to say. So bye bye.